On today's show, we sail, surf, and learn the hula. at home and welcome to another great episode of Aqua Kids here in Hawaii. I'm Katie and I'm Drew and on today's episode the Aqua Kids sail an outrigger canoe and learn how to surf on Hawaii's Waikiki Beach. Then we learn the history of traditional Hawaiian hula and get a free hula lesson. No not like that Drew. <laughs> Aloha! We're here at Hawaiian Ocean Adventures on the island of Oahu in Hawaii and we're going to be traveling the traditional Polynesian way on outrigger canoes. Yeah, actually back in time they used to use those canoes to get in between island to island. Can you imagine how time consuming that must have been? I mean, I really can't. We really take for granted the modes of transportation we have today. We do. But are you ready to go back in time and try it the old fashioned way? Yeah, let's go see for ourselves. Okay. Hey Nicola. We're all very excited to get in the canoe, but is there anything we should know before we get started? Well, um, I would just like to say aloha and welcome to Hawaiian Ocean Adventures. This is our sailing canoe. Um, her name is Pumaikai o Kapai Kukui. It means the blessings of the keepers of the light. It's my um, two Hawaiian grandmother's names. It's our family name. And what we're going to be doing today is to take this sailing canoe out into the beautiful Kaneohe Bay here and uh, get a chance to take you ladies out and have some fun on the water. Do you usually have it tip at all? No, this canoe is pretty sound, although we have <laughs> flipped it over in the middle of the ocean when oh, we're racing yeah. channels, but we won't be flipping her today. So. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I'd hope we'll not. We'll keep you dry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what we'll do is then you can dock Ooh. right under here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll work. Just watch your head on this boom. And then you can step right here and use, use that yep, and slide right over. I'll put your slippers. You can just throw your slippers in the bucket. Yep, perfect. And then same thing, you can come sit right here and then climb right up. Ooh. All right, here we go. The view is really beautiful from here. Yeah, this is one of the more beautiful places on Oahu uh, here in Kaneohe Bay. You can see the mountains come right down to the ocean. And it's also a very wow. traditional sailing canoe area. Um, this is one of the areas where the voyagers first came to Hawaii and landed in this area. Really? And which was over 2,000 years ago. And even today, you can see the mountains are still not built up. Uh, it hasn't been, uh, you know, very much overrun. It probably yeah. looks very much the same as it did oh my 2,000 years ago when our ancestors first came here. How long have Polynesians been using these canoes? These type of canoes have been used throughout Polynesia for over 2,000 years. Oh my wow. God. It's uh, <laughs> so the main old. mode of transportation for. Um, the people of Polynesia, not only of Hawaii, but throughout Polynesia, mm -hmm. uh, to get around. It was our way to get to our ice box. You know, the ocean for us is our major resource yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to provide food and sustenance for our families, but also for the communities. But these canoes uh, provided us transportation. There were um, vessels of war at, at times, you know. Oh, wow. it, was a, it was a way to get out and uh, connect with the water. And then, of course, it was Larger voyaging canoes like this is what brought our ancestors to these islands, you know, over 3,000 miles of open water. Um, our ancestors were able to navigate the oceans using only the stars, the moons, the planets, the sun, wow. and um, be able to, you know, travel over 3,000 miles and find, you know, one of the most isolated places Amazing. on Earth. Are there any sharks here? 
Uh, there are some sharks here. Actually, this bay is renowned for being a breeding ground for um, hammerheads. Oh, wow. So it's always, you know, they're an amakua, type of guardian for a lot of Hawaiians. So it's always nice to see them when you're out here. So do you have to steer using the paddle? The paddle for us is our, um, is acts as our rudder. So basically what we do is when we build our canoes for a safety measure, if you take the paddle out, it'll turn in the wind to stop itself. Oh, okay. So should somebody fall overboard or the captain fall overboard or you lose your paddle, <laughs> the boat will stop itself and turn into the wind. So what oh. we do with the paddle is we use it to keep the nose off the wind and um, pick out a nice straight line for wherever your final destination is and the fastest line. All right, there we go. It's a good way for us to get back to the culture and uh, be able to see a lot of the places you couldn't ever otherwise get to but by boat. So yeah, definitely. We do a lot of different programs where we take out um, different kids, different school programs. Yeah. Take them out, teach them how to sail, teach them about the canoe culture. Well, thanks so much. This was a lot of fun. And I think it was important to share with everyone that this culture is still alive and you're helping to spread it. Man, Katie, that outrigger canoe was really flying. Yeah, it was so exciting. It's great that the Hawaiian people are able to preserve the tradition as part of their culture. Definitely. And when we come back, we learn to surf the waves of Waikiki. Aqua Kids presents another Aqua Kids pop quiz. Can you guess which animal is the longest lived animal on Earth? Is it A, the coconut crab, B, the polar bear, or C, the giant tortoise? Start working on your retirement plan, and I'll be back with the answer after the break. We're back with the answer to today's Aqua Kids pop quiz. So, did you figure out which animal is the longest lived on Earth? If you said C, the giant tortoise, then you're wiser than your years. Giant tortoises can live to be over 170 years old. I wonder how those old giant tortoises keep from tripping on their beards. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. Okay, Katie, surf's up, bruh. And you promised us a surfing lesson. Well, let's go grab our boards and hit the waves. Aloha, we're here at Waikiki Beach on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. And an interesting fact is that surfing was actually created right here in Hawaii. Yeah, surfing was invented by the Polynesian culture and today we get our very own surf lessons. That's right, so surf's up. Let's go. Okay, guys, come on, we're gonna go do that surf lesson. Hey, Mike. How you guys doing? So we are very excited to surf, but none of us have ever done it before. Do you think we could have a quick lesson? Sure, I'll show you how to do these things real easy, okay? But more importantly, the most important thing out there is safety, mm -hmm. okay? When you're up and you're riding the waves, if you fall off the board, please do not go in head or feet first. Let your body fall to the sides. When you're done with the wave and you're paddling back to me and you see a surfer coming at you, you gotta slide off the board and move. Please do not think that somebody out there is going to move for you. Okay, everybody, lie flat on the boards. All right. On your stomach. Face the ocean. Keep your feet together on the board. Okay, we're going to try to keep our body in the center. To make this thing go forward to paddle, we're going to reach out two at a time and pull it straight back. Okay? Mm -hmm. When we get out there, I'm going to ask you to turn the board. To turn the board, it's very similar to, to paddling, except you're going to go in the opposite direction, like this. Okay? If you start off with your right hand in the back, you're gonna make a right turn. Okay, okay. left okay. hand back is a left turn. That makes sense. All right? To stand on the board, you're gonna grab your board below your shoulders. You're gonna lift up your chest, and you're gonna slide your two knees up to your hands. Yeah, okay? At the same time. Now you, ooh, you okay? Yeah. You wanna be on the tips of your toes like I am, okay? Yep. You're gonna bring one foot up, Put it right in the middle of the board between your hands. A little more forward. In the center. More on that line, you see the center line? Yeah. Good. Now you're gonna lift your butt straight up, turn your hip, and then let go of the board. Okay, look at my feet and look at yours. Yeah, we gotta get them straight. Okay. Do you guys have any questions before we hit the water? Does it matter which side of the board we stand on? Not necessarily, so all you wanna do is let your... Can, yeah. One. All you want to do is let your body do what it wants to do. When do you stand up on the board? When I tell you to. Okay. What's going to happen is I'm going to have you paddle into the wave. When you hear me yell stand, you get up. Okay. As we progress through the lesson later, 
I'll show you how to do it on your own. Are you excited, Danielle? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you think you'll be good at this? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try it. How about you, Katie? You a little nervous? Yeah, I think I'm going to fall off a few times. I don't really want to get hurt, but no. if I do, it's all worth Whatever, it. Whatever. Right? <laughs> Kuhani, have you ever surfed before? I have, but not in a long time. Not a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Since I'm going to be better than everyone else, I'm going to get a few pointers. Hey, Mike, yeah. what are some special pointers to make me better? Well, you paddle real hard. Yeah. Start and don't think. Don't think. Don't be a boy. All right, OK. Just don't I can think do and that. let it go. All right. If you think we got problems. And that'll make me better than the other make girls? Make you better than all of them, everybody. All right. You know, I think I'm going to try to be better than everyone else, so I'm going to ask him for a few pointers. So, do you have any pointers for me? Be better than Katie and all of them? Sure, you got to paddle real hard. Real hard? Yeah, okay. and don't think. Don't think? Yeah. What do I think? Thinking's bad. So no thinking? Yeah, try okay. not to be like a boy. A think. boy? Yeah, a oh. boy, right. Boys. <laughs> right. And you'll be better than all the rest of them. Okay. All right? So no thinking and paddling. Paddle real hard. Gotcha. We got you. All right. I'm with you on that. Let's do got this. That. All right, all I right. got you. I think they got it. You ready, Danielle? Take it all the way in, don't stop, no. Yeah, the kids did great. They took the advice I gave them and everybody had a great time and got up and rolled the waves. Jeez, Katie, that was awful. Hey, I think I did pretty good for my first time. Let's hope you're better at hula. Whatever. When we come back, the Aqua Kids get a hula lesson. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. One of the most well-known parts of Hawaiian culture is the hula. The Aqua Kids are about to receive a hula lesson and you may be surprised by its history and origins. Hey guys, today we're here at Queen Emma's Summer Palace on the island of Oahu in Hawaii, where we're going to be learning how to hula. Hula dance was traditionally used in ancient Hawaiian culture to tell stories, share genealogy, as well as honor traditional places and chiefs. So let's go meet up with Matt and see what we learn. How y'all doing today? Great. Good. I'm here to teach you all hula and some history and the background of hula. How many of you have ever danced hula before? None of us. Usually is the case with all of our visitors here in the islands now. Um, primarily what, we, what I usually like to teach is uh, some true history of hula and a true background of hula. And that's probably, in my opinion, probably one of the most important things that a lot of our visitors come to, who come to Hawaii, we all have an idea of hula. But I want to teach exactly what hula is. And generally when I teach this and I instruct this, I try to ask a few questions just to get everyone's perception on this and I'll recorrect the perceptions. First one, who can tell me what hula is? What is hula? Storytelling? Yes. Hula was a way of telling story. Uh, ancient Hawaiians had no written form of history, so everything was passed on through the spoken word. And therefore, you, hula was utilized as a way of telling that story before the actual written language came to our islands. What else? Is religion one? Actually, yes. Relig religious Hawaiians use hula as religious aspects. You know, there was believed to be four major gods. Hawaiians actually had many demigods and many gods, but there's four major ones. And the Hawaiians used hula as a way of communication with these ancient gods. Okay, what else? Hula is also a martial arts, isn't it? Well, actually, it's an amazing um, point that you put there because hula wasn't a martial arts, but it was believed that hula derived from a martial arts known as lua. Lua was considered one of the most deadliest forms of martial arts known to mankind. Oh, okay. Therefore, the misconception of hula is a woman's dance goes right out the door. Hawaiians have been dancing hula for thousands of years. Women were only introduced to the dance about a hundred years ago. Really? Hula is technically a man's dance. <laughs> hula is actually created from the ancient warriors that, that understood and were taking this uh, ancient form of martial arts known as lua. So we'll always, uh, always try to understand that it is a man's dance. 
There so. you go, Clark. <laughs> Another question I'm going to ask. From the top of your head all the way down to the soles of your feet, there is a specific spot in your body where a hula exists. Can anybody tell me where that is? Is it your hips? The hips is the number one answer I usually get. It is not the correct one. Really? Yes. Then it's got to be the feet. Yeah, amazing. You guys are a real smart bunch. <laughs> hula, you're right. Hula is in the feet. Hula is technically a series of foot motions. The hands are very important also to hula. However, the hands are not a protocol. But if you want to understand what the dancers are dancing, always watch the hands. The hands will tell you exactly what they're doing. Their body will mimic nature. Nature is very important to the Hawaiian people. As a matter of fact, the Hawaiians viewed nature as their elder sibling or their elder. Therefore, they would pay homage to nature and they would mimic their bodies to that of nature and hula was created. Okay, so once again, Hands tell the story, the body will mimic nature, their feet are the actual protocols. So, first step I'm going to teach you is called kaholo. Kaholo is four steps to the right, four steps to the left. Ready? Follow along with me. I ha up. Five, six, seven, and one. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Very good. All right, let's do our second step. Hands on your hips. I ha. -a. This step is called hela. This is the oldest recorded hula step in the Hawaiian hula art form. And with our right foot, we're going to bring out 45 degree angle. So we're going to bring it out just a little bit further out this court, yeah? Okay, now I was taught to leave the heel on the ground. Some schools of hula are taught to lift off the heel. Which protocol, which one is correct? It depends on the school that you come from, the lineage that you come from. So I was taught to leave the heel on the ground, therefore I teach to leave the heel on the ground. So those are just two steps I'm going to teach you this morning. Remember, there's over 1,600 steps. <laughs> Some of the things in nature we will need to know. One, one in particular is mountain. So we're going to have hands down. I want, I want you to think of this. Remember, almost like we're playing God. Why don't you imagine there's a mountain right in front of you. Okay? And we're going to run our hands just along the side of the mountain, a little drop, and to the top, drop it straight down, and again, the other side. Okay, remember, you're being very descriptive. You're describing that mountain, so why don't you be descriptive with your hands? So this song says, Kaulana mai nei a ulu palakua. Famous is in the mountain sides of ulu palakua. He iniki niki ahi hahi. Remember, we're talking about 6,000 feet in elevation. Up there, it can freeze. So they talk about when the wind whips in that area, it causes what you all may know as goose bumps or goose pimples. Chicken skin. Here in Hawaii, we say chicken skin. Oh. We say chicken skin. So this one, we're going to form the chicken skin on our hands. So we're going to start with the right hand, or right arm. We're going to pinch three times. One, two, three. Other side. One, two, three. Once again, here we go. He i ni ki ni ki ahi ahi. Kahome o paniolo. This is the home of the Hawaiian cowboy. We're going to make that house. And with your right hand, we're going to swing this rope around your, around your head. Remember, we're mimicking the Hawaiian cowboy. And with your left hand, we're going to hold in a 45 degree angle. We're mimicking holding onto the reins of the horse. Five, six, seven, and kaulana mai ni. Mountains. Aolupalakua. Chicken skin. E ini ki ni ki ahi ahi. Make the house. Kaho mea upani olo. Kaholo. Well, thank you, Matt. It was a great opportunity that we could all learn how to dance the traditional hula. And hopefully, we can come back and do it again someday. I would love that. You guys are a great, great bunch of kids here. <laughs> and um, thank you for allowing me the pleasure to explain to you some of our traditions, You're especially a great to the teacher, really. Thank I, you. Mean, yeah. I think I could probably teach someone how to hula. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank go you. home and teach all my friends. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Drew, you think you can hula now? I got this. <laughs> Don't go away. Aqua Kids will be right back. Here's our top story. Six-year-old becomes ambassador for Hawaiian monk seal conservation. The Hawaiian monk seal is arguably one of the most beautiful sights in Hawaii. Its graceful moves and adorable face leave many in complete awe. 
Unfortunately, the Hawaiian monk seal population has drastically decreased in past years. The species is now critically endangered and on the brink of extinction due to pollution and commercial fishing. With only around 1,100 left in the wild, any efforts to protect this animal are greatly appreciated by the Hawaiian people who consider this animal a part of their culture. One celebrated activist is six-year-old Connor Berryhill, who took it upon himself to be part of the Hawaiian monk seal conservation movement. From picking up trash on the beach to making presentations about the Hawaiian monk seal to his kindergarten class, Connor has done all he can to preserve these animals. Connor's dedication at such a young age is certainly something that should inspire all to take an active role in protecting the world around them. That's all for Aqua News. Now, back to Aqua Kids. Katie, you guys really had some hands-on experience with Hawaiian culture this week. Yeah, it was quite the workout, but a lot of fun. I had no idea that the hula was originally just for men. Well, Drew, there are a lot of misconceptions about Hawaii and Hawaiian culture. Hawaii is not some theme park, after all. It's a place of rich history as well as natural beauty. If you keep an open mind, you'll come away with a lot more than just a tan. And remember, everyone can help do their part to keep this planet green and blue. And so can you. So visit our website for cool eco tips. And fun links to show you how we can keep the world and the water a great place to play and explore. And we'll see you next time on, on Aqua, Aqua Kids. Kids.